The Super Robot Wars series began on the Game Boy, developed by the now-defunct Winkisoft and published by Ben Presto. This turn-based strategy RPG was released exclusively in Japan on April of 1991 and featured super-deformed depictions of three franchises – Gundam, Getter Robo and Mazinger C. While it has the same crossover concept as its successors, the very first game is a different beast, featuring the mecha themselves as sentient beings rather than piloted machines, and it has enemy recruitment as an integral gameplay mechanic. In December of that same year came along the second Super Robot Wars, starting the series as we know it today. It also started the classic timeline, which eventually came to an end with F Final. The series continued with a number of standalone titles, and also new timelines like the Alpha Subseries. Each game refined the mechanics and made the animations better and crazier. The series is typically credited to Bampresto, or BB Studio as they are called now, but many titles were made in collaboration with companies such as Winkisoft, responsible for most of the classic era, and Tose, which worked on the original Generation sub-series. Someone on the team must have had the genius idea of making a crossover of their crossovers, and thus Original Generation was born and then got turned into an anime, and then got a remake, and then got turned into a second anime. The plot involves the discovery of the mysterious Meteor 3, which contained technology unknown to mankind, referred to as Extra Over Technology. Bion Zoldark, in charge of the Extra Over Technology Committee, warns the Earth Federation that an alien attack on Earth is likely. As a result, development of mobile weapons called Personal Troopers begins. To start with, you pick one of the two protagonists. Ryusei's route begins with him paying a visit to his sick mother, before heading to a burning PT game tournament to earn money to pay her bills. But while he tears his way to victory, some creepos have been monitoring his mental state from nearby the arena. Things then go awry when a group of alien crafts interrupt the ceremony, and one of them crashes into the arena after engaging with the local army. The observers send out a personal trooper and the soldiers are given the order to withdraw, leaving civilians to their fate unless someone does something. Yusei decides to check it out and notices that there's nobody in there, and that this particular unit has the same controls as the Burning PT game. And being the anime protagonist that he is, he jumps in and fights off the aliens. This leads him to joining Project SRX, led by the enigmatic Ingram Priskin. Kyosuke's route begins with a test session for a new personal trooper, which turns out to have been rigged by a certain cuntface who wants to play corporate politics. However, having the devil's luck, Kyosuke manages to escape the crash without any fatal injuries. He gets transferred to the Earth Federation's North American Brigade, where he is assigned to Project ATX and its team of very colorful characters. The first and third sections of the story are unique to each protagonist, but around the halfway point their paths intersect, with characters and units from each route joining into one big happy family of misfits. Stereotypical though a lot of them might be, Original Generation has an entertaining cast of characters with their own personalities, quirks and problems. The story involves a lot of politics and interpersonal drama, but they are interspersed with light-hearted bits of humor and silliness. And it's good that you end up liking the characters, because there's a lot of dialogue. The game has a very straightforward structure, with pre-stage dialogue, the actual stage itself, the post-stage dialogue, and finally the intermission where you can manage your team members. Stages take place in a map split into tiles, and the player and the AI take turns at smacking each other. During each side's turn, units take actions such as moving, attacking and… absolutely nothing. Pilots have six base stats. 
melee and range increase the damage of melee and ranged weapons. Skill affects critical hit rate and the activation rate of some skills. Evade and hit affect the character's chances to dodge and hit attacks, and defense reduces damage taken. Pilots can have up to six skills, some unique and permanent, and some obtainable with pilot points acquired from shooting down enemies. Or alternatively, they can be spent on terrain rankings and stats. As they level up, Pilots also learn a set of six spirit commands that can be used during their turn. These include effects like increased movement range or boosting damage for one attack. But using them costs SP, which increases with level and can only be restored through a handful of methods. Units have HP, energy, mobility, armor and movement. HP is self-explanatory. Energy is spent on certain weapons and abilities, and moving through air and space terrain. Mobility affects the unit's evasion, armor affects the damage taken, and movement indicates how many tiles they can move. Both pilots and units have terrain rankings for air, ground, water and space, with the effective ranking being averaged between the two. This defines how well they can move and perform on that terrain. Weapons have their own stats, but only some can be used after moving. A select few are map weapons that target multiple tiles, and some units can even equip different general use weapons and tools. All units can also equip option parts, which grant passive bonuses like higher stats or terrain rankings. Both units and weapons can be upgraded by spending lots of money. The most powerful weapons are particularly expensive to upgrade, but later on, you'll be glad you did. This all might sound complicated, but that's just because there's a ton of variables at play. The actual gameplay is pretty straightforward, and aside from a few specific boss battles, the difficulty is quite approachable even for beginners. And if you're a big brain pro gamer, you can try earning the battle masteries. They are necessary to unlock certain secrets, but they also serve to adjust the game's difficulty. They're CC, Normal and Hard, and the selected one depends on how many battle masteries you have acquired. Being a strategy RPG means that half the battle is manipulating chance, and half the battle is positioning. The support system has been a part of the series for a long time now, letting units adjacent to each other perform a second attack during the player turn, or protect an ally during the enemy turn. Original Generation still uses the old system where both support attack and support defense draw from the same usage count, with the support skill granting one use for each skill level. Different terrains also provide different defense and evasion bonuses, with some even providing HP and energy recovery. Combine them with proper usage of spirits and supports, and shoot those lasers through an alien robot's face until it dies. Speaking of which, Super Robot Wars has a reputation for its high-quality 2D artwork and attack animations. Although original generation probably won't be impressing anyone in the year of our and Holy World 2020 plus one, but we'll get to the good stuff soon, I promise. And hey, the animations might be basic by today's standards, but the sprites themselves look good. The map screen isn't as exciting, but I quickly grew fond of the little head icons, and I would rather have these instead of the ugly 3D maps seen in some games or whatever the hell this was. The music is pretty good too, although half the cast is stuck with the same theme song. It's not bad, but it gets repetitive pretty quick. Just like the 7.8 watery hell that is the first part of Ryusei's route, in which you're stuck with a bunch of ground units versus walls of flying bricks. There's also a large power gap between the good and the bad units, with the Grungust and Cybuster dabbing on your mass-produced Gispensts. Thankfully, Kyosuke's early route doesn't suffer from this, giving you more variety in units and terrain. However, both routes do start feeling a bit sluggish as the end approaches. 
You get more Doge and wider access to Devour Spirit, but many enemies later on aren't threatening, they just have tons of HP. If you've played other games in the series, you might also find the scale to be a bit boring by comparison, I guess? Original Generation 1 is a rather low-tech game, if that makes sense, being fairly held back compared to the insanity of the later games that drive power levels to ridiculous degrees. But I'm sure that some people would appreciate the change from the usual tropes of alternate universes, time traveling and gods of destruction that every other game seems to have nowadays. Besides that... I guess some weapons like the machine guns can cheese everything early on, since they can be upgraded to max damage for a low amount of doge and dispatch many early game enemies with a single hit. Honestly though, none of this tarnishes the experience in any significant way. In fact, some of it might fly right over you, because they're the kind of things you won't know if you're not familiar with the series. You know, real pro gamer strats. Having not played this game in years, I was surprised at how well it holds up despite lacking all the advancements of later games. The characters are entertaining, the dialogue strikes a good balance between serious and laid back, and the gameplay is comparatively simple but engaging enough. Though it certainly is kind of obsolete because of the multiple retellings of its story, like the Japan exclusive PlayStation 2 remake that got a complete fan translation late last year, which certainly makes things a lot easier for myself. Super Robot Wars Original Generations, in plural, is comprised of a complete remake of Original Generation 1, as well as its sequel. But let's just focus on the first game. The structure of the story remains the same. You have two routes, which converge at the halfway point and then split again for the last stretch. However, certain details have been rewritten. One example is the start of Ryusei's route. In the original game, Ryusei wins the tournament since Tencent didn't show up, so he gets the Doge to help pay his mother's medical bills. Ryusei then joins Ingram so that he can be pardoned for boarding a military unit without permission. In the remake, Tencent shows up and defeats Ryusei on the final match of the tournament. What happens is that instead Ingram offers to pay his mother's bills, with the condition that Ryusei joins his plans. There's also completely new scenes and plot points that develop the story further, or add some more foreshadowing, perhaps a bit too much even. The new content also helps connect the first game to the second, which introduced new characters and concepts that were never mentioned in the first game, but were treated in the second as if they had always been there. To help with this, Original Generations includes a database with lots of information on the setting, as well as a quick walk-up function that lets you easily refer to highlighted words during dialogue. Everything else got an equally significant revamp too, such as the dialogue screen now having full busts instead of little portraits, giving you a better look at each character. Expect a lot of quality of life improvements too, like a backlog and automatic text or the ability to select multiple spirits at once. The map screen is now fully 3D, you can zoom and rotate the camera, and units are now represented by 3D models. Although sometimes it can be hard to tell where the cursor is, and since the game doesn't have any bonuses for positioning or height advantages, it just becomes an occasional annoyance. And I mean, the quality of the assets is pretty low, and the native resolution makes everything look like a mess. And yes, it works much better when you run it at higher resolutions on an emulator, but it screws up the battle animations with noticeable visual artifacts on the backgrounds. And Jesus F Christ, these animations make me harder than diamonds. The Super Robot Wars series is known for its excellent sprite work and for its iconic battle scene layout, and Original Generations remains one of the best examples of that to this day. 
There's no more units simply sliding around or watching a rocket from out of nowhere. Everything from sword slashes to cannon volleys to complex combos with multiple weapons is an absolute delight to watch. To top it all off, the battle scenes are fully voiced, and most characters have a unique theme now. I also want to emphasize how consistently good this game's animations are, because some of the mainline titles have been stumbling a bit, with some things looking really good and some things looking… not so good. Of course, the original generation games have the advantage of not being a licensing nightmare, and typically also have much longer development cycles. Regardless, you can rest assured that it's not just style over substance, thanks to the revamped gameplay. A big change is the new twin system, which parallels the squad systems used in other games in the series, namely the partner system used in the DS and 3DS games. Once they reach 110 will, two units can form a twin pair, letting them move as a single unit and granting a small bonus based on their category. One of the units is the main, and the other is the sub. The main takes point in combat, but both participate. Of course, enemies can also use the twin system, in which case you can choose which unit to target. Units can still evade or defend as normal, but subunits both deal and receive less damage, and there are all and all double weapons that ignore support defense and can target both units or even two pairs at once. Spirits are usable like normal, with some applying to both units. Each pilot also has a twin command, which is a special spirit that spends SP from both pilots. The amount of pilot points earned from enemies has been changed, and new spirits and skills that weren't present in the original game have been added, while existing ones were rebalanced. Support attack and support defense also have separate usage counts now. There are new player and enemy units, such as a ton of new Leon variants for the Defined Crusaders and the new Armor Leon for the player, which is ridiculously good and I love it. The intermission screen got a few changes, such as the Aces ranking that displays your top 3 pilots and how many enemies they've shot down. And on that same note, custom Ace bonuses are now a thing. In the original game, pilots that shoot down 50 enemies become ace pilots, making them earn 20% more money and start with an extra 5 will. But now, each pilot has their own unique bonus. Similarly, fully upgrading a unit now grants them a full custom bonus, of which you can pick from 5 stat boosts or a bonus unique to each unit. Like ace bonuses, these were only present in the second game. Finally, there's custom ammo, a new feature that lets you add bonuses to general use weapons, like more damage, secondary effects, or even making it possible to use them after moving. The bonuses come from the new materials that you find as you play the game. You mix three of them together, then equip the resulting ammo into a compatible weapon. Overall, all these changes make the game flow better and faster, especially late game where you're up against very tanky enemies. You earn more pilot points in general, the best skills are slightly cheaper, and being able to sell parts for money lets you upgrade units and weapons more frequently. The twin system combined with support attacks also means that you can hit an enemy up to 4 times in a single move which makes earning certain battle masteries much easier than in the original game. So in a way, it's easier than the original… original generation, but some enemies have been buffed to compensate, and the twin system can be equally dangerous to the player since units with lower evasion can get caught up in an enemy's all-weapon, and obviously it also means that the player has twice the enemies to worry about. But ultimately, Original Generations enhances the experience in pretty much every single way. It adds some new stuff, makes the old stuff look awesome and is generally an all-around good time. The only thing that's missing is the chain attacks that appeared in later GBA and DS titles, including Original Generation 2.
This would let you strike multiple adjacent units with certain weapons, but unfortunately it's completely absent in the remake. Even though I'm a big believer in checking out every version of a game, you could just jump into the remake and not lose anything, because, you see, Original Generations doesn't just dunk on the original game in every way, it straight up replaces it. The story's multiple retellings either changed existing details or added completely new plot points that are regarded as canon by its sequels, and being the starting point naturally means that it's the most outdated. In fact, original Generation 1 and 2 aren't even considered a separate thing anymore. Instead, it's Original Generations Episode 1, Define Wars, and Original Generations Episode 2, The Inspectors. Thankfully, the remake's fan translation and the subtitles for the anime adaptations make the updated story more accessible than the bits of it scattered throughout old GameFAQs guides or wiki pages with more misinformation than the average politician. The official translation and the fan translation also make certain vocalization choices that boggles the mind, but still. And you know what? I'm glad these games are in English now, and hopefully the next game will be available worldwide on PC, since it's not a licensing nightmare like the mainline series. It's a niche series, sure, but if the western release of Crossrace is any indication, there is an audience for it outside Asia. But whichever way you go, original game or remake, it will be a super good time.